So it's here then. The ZWO camera angle adjuster has been released and is now available for purchase and delivery. In light of that, I did ask if I could get my hands on one to make a review. So ZWO very politely obliged me. Thank you very much ZWO for sending me this review sample. Now a camera angle adjuster has been something I've seen requested for quite some time actually and I know ZWO have been working on this for a while. When I first saw the announcement I naturally shared my thoughts about it on the website and that's when I really reached out to them and said can I get one so I can test some of these things out for you. Now I have never used a camera angle rotator before or a camera angle adjuster before. There have been times when I could have really done with them. You know if you're doing multiple nights of imaging things like that and you need to slightly change it having a rotator would have been really useful then. And naturally, of course, I went on holiday just when this came through the post, and then the British weather has been doing its thing with a vengeance. So I've got as much time as I can with this so I can make this review for you. So let's begin on the review of the ZWO camera angle adjuster. The first question I thought would ask was, why would you even want an adjuster in the first place? Surely the most obvious thing we do is at the start of an imaging session, we go up to the telescope, loosen off the reducer or whatever, and we manually rotate it round, lock it down and off we go. That's immediately one area where a rotator will help with that or a camera angle adjuster will help with that because now we don't have to keep undoing our reducers and our camera, uh, camera assembly, we can just get on with it. However, the main ability I've identified and the main advantage of having a rotator is if you're in the middle of an imaging session and you need to slew over to another target, that's when it's really gonna come in handy. So imagine this, it's a clear night, especially in Britain when you get two clear nights a month, if you're that, and you've imaged your first target. So for me, it was Andromeda. I've took some images of Andromeda and now I want to move over to something like the Pleiades. I want to adjust the framing so I can get just how I want it to be. Now, really? Before, I would have to either stay up late or wake up early, go out to my camera, take some flats, remove it, rotate it myself, lock it down, refocus the camera, and then I can start on the Pleiades. Now with a rotator like the camera angle adjuster here, it all happens in the software. I can program in the new angle. When it slews over to the second target, it then rotates it. The other thing I've identified is this angle adjuster, the ZWCAA, it's accurate to 0.02 degrees of rotation. And if it was at that degree, and then at that degree, and then at that angle, you can mimic that for when it comes to taking your flat frames. And of course, naturally, when I rotate the camera assembly, if there's a bit of dust on the sensor, that will rotate with the sensor. That will then cause problems to my light frames and my flats will have to be redone. So I can then program in my rotation into a flat plan and then it will go from that to that to that and all my flat frames will now match up to their respective lights. This is a really good advantage for those people who like to do multi-targets every night like I sometimes do, go from one to another to another and I don't now need to go up, loosen off the camera assembly, mess around with it like that, I can just program it in. ZWO products, in my opinion, I find are generally pretty well made. The build quality of the CAA is no exception. It feels very, very well engineered in the hand. It doesn't feel like it rattles and it feels nice and tough. When you first initially open the box, you are greeted to the CEA looking very boldly at you. And you can see it's snugly packaged as well. It's not going anywhere in its box. Included in the box are all the adapters you're gonna need and all the tools you need to use the thing. So there's no extra purchases initially that you need to make. Additionally, in the box, you get the USB cable needed to use it. You don't get a hand controller as standard. You would need to buy that separately, as well as, as mentioned, the other adapter plate and a full color quick reference guide. It, of course, has the signature red ZWA finish to it. But if you look carefully at it, it looks like it's starting to get a bit of texture in the paintwork as well. It makes it look that bit nicer. However, the labels and all the white stickers, they feel like they are transfers and not actually laser etched on. So maybe that's something they can do in the future just to make it a bit more permanent. Another nice thing is the engineering as mentioned is really good, but the threads, the threads feel so pronounced and so well engineered that you can, ah, they're just really, really good. The nice thing about that, of course, it reduces the likelihood of stripping a thread. And you know, when you screw your ad adapters and your cameras on, they actually are machined really well and it holds it really well. And so the ZWA CAA, because it is a ZWA product, of course it is machined to work directly with other ZWA products. 
As such, the threads built into the front of it, this is the telescope side, are M54 times 0.75 millimeter threads. The 0.75 is pretty standard, M54 is the diameter of it. That's great for ZWO products, but maybe not so good for others. On the back side where the rotator is itself, again, M54 threads, but you do get an M48 adapter plate in the box, including the Allen key you need to change it over. Going a bit more about that, M54, fine for ZWO products, but when it came to me and my Skywatcher Evo Star, the Evo Star uses M56 on the back of the focus tube where this would be bolting onto, which of course was a problem because it didn't fit. So what I had to do was get an M56 to M54 adapter, which I got from First Light Optics, which allowed me to bolt the ZWOCAA to the back of the telescope. And then again, on the back side here, the Skywatcher product, the reducer flattener was M56 as well. So I then had to get an M56 to M48 step down adapter to make the reducer fit onto the CAA. So whilst the CAA comes with everything you need to work with the ZWO product out the box, you might need to buy some adapters elsewhere to get this to fit perfectly with your telescope. Now, one other thing I did notice about these threads, as well engineered and pronounced as they are, and this is something I noticed kind of about the entire astronomy industry anyway, when you bolt on your adapters or your other bits of gear, they snag really tightly. They, they are get really tight really quick. And it was very hard actually for me to keep doing up my M56 to M54 adapter and then even more harder to undo it. It really, it felt like it cross thread, but it hadn't. So my advice would be definitely either use a washer, like a really thin paper washer if you need to, so you can undo it a bit easier, or a very, very, very little bit of just a very light grease on the threads of your adapter will mean that it will hold it tightly enough and nice and snugly. However, if you just, you only need a jab, right? Just a tiny bit. You also have a locking pin at the front side here. So there'll be a certain point where there'll be a hole there. You can put the Allen key that you get there, lock the rotation of it. I imagine that's meant to help you, you know, tighten and loosen off the backside as well. Other than all, top marks for build quality for this product. Next up then is actually how much can this carry or rather rotate? Now, as mentioned, the threads are fine. I have absolutely no concern about the quality of the threads on this and being able to hold on to your camera. However, the motors in here still have to rotate that assembly, right? Your camera reduces any filter wheels you might be using, etc., etc., etc. ZW's marketing copy states it can rotate around 4.4 kilograms. That's around nine pounds, 11 ounces. So I wanna test that out. DSLR I'm gonna put on the back of this weighs around 750 grams. So of course, I'm gonna to have to add a bit of weight to that. Now, me being half Iranian, that extra weight inexplicably, of course, comes in the form of rice. This particular vintage is basmati from Tesco, and it's delicious. So I'm not going to test this thing to failure because it is a review copy and I don't wanna break it. I just want to match what they state. They say 4.4 kilograms. So I'm gonna tape some extra weight to a DSLR camera, and we're gonna see if it can rotate it. <laughs> now that it has been attached to your telescope you've put your camera on the back of it it's had its warm-up rice stretches of all things how is it like to actually use this thing now initially truthfully at the beginning i struggled i plugged all this on i did everything up i opened up the asi app connected to the caa and then asked it to rotate and it didn't rotate the app was telling me it was rotating i did hear a noise come from the caa but it didn't actually move. Now, what I think actually happened is I may have tightened this a bit too much and maybe it slipped slightly because once I loosened off the camera and then nipped it back up again, it then began to rotate absolutely fine. So no problems there. Once I got it rotating first, it worked without problems after that. Now, this thing is smooth. I mean, like really, really smooth. It worked so nicely. And as just mentioned, you can manually control the rotation through the app on this, but it also includes ASCOM drivers. So that means you can use third-party software such as Nina to also control the rotation on this. You do not have to just use the ASI Air app. So other people, if you aren't using ASI Air, 
don't worry, you can use this with your favorite imaging and camera control program. And when it was time to make an imaging plan with the ASI Air, it was pretty straightforward. Go to the plan mode, and then I could either add my targets in through the modify plan, or I could go to the sky atlas and then click them down to add them to the plan down there. From there, if you click the little thumbnail of the plan on the bottom left, you then click the top right where it says angle and rotate, you can then adjust the angle you want it to be. You can see it update live on the screen, really straightforward, hit confirm, and then you have now set your new angle as well. And you'll see when you go into the plan screen, you'll see as well where it says what angle it wants to use. Now, one thing I was very keen to test is of course, cables. How do the cables behave when this thing starts rotating around? Because of course, on the back side here where your camera is, you might have a filter wheel, you might, you'll might you have your camera, you'll have your cables running to and from it. If you don't have enough slack on it, what's going to happen? Is it gonna twist the cables around the tube? Is it gonna pull cables out? That was one thing I was very interested to try. Another thing I was very keen to see is will it keep rotating in one direction, ultimately you know, tightening, tightening, and tightening up those cables? So that's one thing I was very, very keen to test on that evening. One thing I did notice when I was using the app, the manual control in the app, it would of course prioritize whichever hemisphere was closest, whichever direction was closest to the new angle I've requested. So if I was in you know, zero position and I wanted to go to 170, it would rotate one way. If I then said, you know, go up to 190, it would then rotate in that continuous direction. Say for example, it kept, it kept rotating clockwise because clockwise was the closest direction to its new angle. And that would definitely over time cause a problem if you didn't notice it. In order to test that, I made this awful plan on that clear night with the Pleiades, where I was taking one frame, add a rotation, take another frame, add a rotation. And what I wanted to see was how much would it keep rotating in one direction. I was happy to notice that it seems to be using a different algorithm when it's actually using the plan mode. Say for example, it went over to 170 degrees in one direction. I then asked it to rotate another 90 degrees. It actually rotated the other way around to go to that rotation. So it would then unwrap the cable as much as I tried to make it just turn clockwise, clockwise, clockwise and start pulling cables out, the algorithm didn't let that happen. So that was very reassuring. However, on the back side of that, something I noticed and a lot of people have been talking about on the forums and on Facebook and things like that is the Meridian Flip. Now, of course, we have a rotator on here so I can match my framing exactly to where I want it to be. So what's happening is after the Meridian Flip, the image is now upside down, of course, not a problem. But because it wants to plate solve, it will then rotate the camera 180 degrees while it recenters itself and matches that framing exactly. The issue with that now is, again, I've moved the camera, so any dust on my camera has now moved. You would have to take fresh flat frames. ZWO are aware of this. As I've noticed, they have been, some people have been replying on the forums. It's something they're aware of, so I'm sure there'll be a firmware or a software update coming up soon to fix that issue. I can't comment on whether or not Nina or APT or anything like that would do it, but I imagine it could be something to do with the drivers in the ZWO CAA itself. One thing they have took into account though, is if you're using the duo camera where it's got the built-in guide camera to the main camera, there is a setting, at least on ASI Air, where you can tick it and say, look, it's gonna rotate with the camera. So that means whenever the camera is rotated, it will rotate the guide calibration data with it. So that just means you don't have to recalibrate guiding every time you've rotated the camera, which is a clever feature. And it's good to see that they implemented it. Something I did notice, particularly with my own setup, is once I'd adapted a DSLR to fit onto the camera angle adjuster, where am I gonna put my filters? It's almost like I'm relying on clipping filters for the DSLR here. Now I could possibly put a filter wheel between the CAA and the reducer or a clip and filter draw between the CAA and the reducer, that's not necessarily best practice. So this is almost to me, a bit awkward to try and find some filters on it. It seems to me then the CAA is better suited for dedicated cameras like this. This is just a 585MC, nothing special about this. It's not the cord model, wouldn't matter if it's cord because it just hangs a bit further off the back. What we have then is the CAA going into the reducer, the flattener, coma corrector, whatever you're using. The extension pieces you need to achieve back focus for the reducer to work properly and then your camera itself so now if i was to fitting if i had to filter a filter wheel or a draw a filter drawer in this 
you would take that distance off of these adapters in the middle, which means you would have space to fit it. Another potential problem that could crop up is focusing distance. And it's not back focus for once, like what we usually encounter, but it's instead forward focus. Do you have enough? Now on my Skywatcher Evo Star example here, this is where the 585 with the reducer had previously fetched focus. Now I have about 26 millimeters left on the tube to go back inwards. So I've got 26 millimeters of forward focus to play with. The CAA is about 15 millimeters thick. So I'd have to then rack that focus tube in by 15 millimeters to make sure the camera still hits the same focal plane. Not a problem with this, I have enough space, but by the time you add any other adapters that you might be needing, and it doesn't come out of your reducer distance here, you're gonna start running out of forward focus. So just be sure your telescope has enough front focus to achieve the focus plane. Shouldn't be a problem, but just bear it in mind. Now I imagine this would be absolutely ideal for people with permanent setups, be that on a pier or an observatory, whatever. If you've got a permanent setup, I can definitely see this benefiting you. But most people would be able to find a use for it. As mentioned, it's just a little bit less hassle to go out and do your bolts your, on your focus tube, rotate the whole camera assembly, try to get it nice and flush, tighten it back up again properly. This removes that aggro. There have been many nights where I have changed my, my rotation to do one of the target and then gone back to my first target. I've had to manually rotate it back, but it's never quite on. And that means I'll be cropping off edges off of my images, losing valuable data. So that is a benefit of having a camera angle adjuster. It removes that problem. You just program where you want it to go and it will go back exactly where it was. Very, very accurate, very smooth. And at the very beginning of this review, I mentioned about the price. I said that the price seemed a bit steep. At the time of this review, it retails at 299 pounds. Now, actually, after doing some more research, this is actually the cheapest camera angle adjuster on the market. When you look at the other competitors like Deep Sky Dad and Prima Luce, the ZWO model is the cheaper one of the three. So that means the ZWO CAA enters a rather small niche and competitive market of camera angle adjusters. And I feel like it puts on a good show. And when you compare its price point against its competitors, it's good value. Its overall build quality, rather sturdy design, thick machine threads, consistency, smoothness of operation and relative quietness, I feel this is a good product. No, I don't think this product's going to be for everybody. Not everyone is going to be willing on splashing 300 pounds out for a product to just turn the camera. They're more happy, they'll be more than happy to go out to the tube, undo it, rotate it by hand, tighten it back up, and that's fine. Not everything is for everybody. But if you are in the market for a camera angle adjuster, then the ZWO CAA works. Yes, I found a couple of small drawbacks with this product, but no product is perfect and everyone's arrangements are slightly different. This is why having lots of different reviews available are always handy to you when you're making a decision. Now, if you do fancy making a purchase for a camera angle adjuster, feel free to use the link in my description down below. If you use that link, I'll get a bit of kickback, a bit of extra support for this channel, and it comes at no extra cost to you. And with that, that's it for the ZWOCA review. I hope you found this video interesting and informative, and if you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. If you think I could have done better, give it a thumbs down and leave a comment down below of your thoughts of the CAA. With all that said, all that's left for me to say is clear skies, everybody. Keep looking up and keep them cameras clicking. I'll see you later.